Here's yet another controversial study on the value of mammograms, verifying that there are many errors detecting breast cancers that may not be life-threatening, and yet they're treated as if they are with chemo, radiation, and surgery. Now, a new study shows that one-third of cancers that are detected through mammograms may not be life-threatening, and that means that they're not just the ductal carcinoma in situ that we've talked about so many times. So this comes to 1.3 million women that have been diagnosed with breast cancers that are not life-threatening over the last three decades right. that have been treated as if they did have it. That's right. It's, a, it's the silliest thing of all time. And the question you pose, Vicki, is really good. And this was something that came up in the New England Journal of Medicine, probably the most prestigious medical journal there is in November of 2012, sh showing this. And this is why we need to ask, do mammograms really save life or do they do harm? Well, they do both. But they don't do enough in women under the age of 50 is what it boils down to. And here's the reason. Women under the age of 50 who are premenopausal usually have <clears throat> breasts that are kind of lumpy. They have A lot of them have fibrocystic breasts. They're dense. Yeah, they're dense. And you can't tell a, something that's a cyst, a fibrous cyst, from something that's a cancer based on just tissue density. Like so many times you've said, it's kind of like flying over the North Pole looking for a polar bear. That's how hard it is to detect a breast cancer with mammograms. Exactly. So we need a better test, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But we really need to know uh, that, that breast cancers, a lot of the time, just disappear. And a lot of the cancers that we're diagnosing are called ductal carcinoma in situ. Probably 30% of, of what we call cancers are ductal carcinoma in situ. And only 2 or 3% of those are going to be lethal. The other 97% are not going to be lethal. And these women are going to be treated anyway with surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy if they're doing what most oncologists will recommend. And no matter how many studies come out about this, everybody seems to just kind of ignore it. And it's the same thing with prostate cancer. Well, I think what happens is people think, oh, they're trying to take away my tests. You know, they wanna, th now they want to take away the, the mammogram. Yeah. Right. They want to save money. And Obamacare was doing this and that that's saving, uh, saving expenses. And the women get scared. It's like, I want to be tested when I'm 40. My mother had breast That's cancer. Right. They don't want to wait till they're 50. Well, here's the downside, right? You're going to wind up with a lot of diagnoses that are incorrect and overtreated when they don't need to be. And when you look at 1.3 million people over the last three decades, that's a tremendous number of people. The United, Service, the United States Preventive Services Task Force in 2009 came up with a suggestion that maybe we shouldn't be doing so many mammograms on women under the age of 50. And I still remember Dr. Otis Brawley, who was the chief medical uh, person who ran the American Cancer Society's uh, medical program, coming out with a, a, uh, an article in the New York Times saying that. And it wasn't but about three hours later that he was retracting his statement because I'm sure what happened is that the people in, who were running the American Cancer Society wanted to keep in good faith with the pharmaceutical company who's funding a lot of the projects that they run. And we rarely hear about the downside with the radiation. You know, we oh, talk right. about it a lot. We have it in a lot of our radio shows and our fast tracks here on drsaputo.com. But you don't hear that in the news. You don't hear in the news that one out of 800... Uh, one out of 1,800 mammograms saves a life, That's right. and that two get cancer, or one to two get cancer right. out of that number from the mammograms. Right, so it's not something that's just an, a, a test that you don't have to worry about. There's definitely downsides with overdiagnosis, overtreatment, and lots of problems from that. And many of their, their um, comments on the other side and the studies that they talk about are actually lumping together the young and the old. Yeah. And so, it's not the same. So what Vicky means here is that when you take women under the age of or under the age of fifty particularly, and you're looking at ductal carcinomas in situ and er very early cancers, well those have a very low mortality rate. And so when you find more of them, then it's gonna make the overall survival rate Look seem better. to be better when it's not. So when we are looking at uh, this whole situation, we got to take more uh, into account for how old is the woman, what are the likelihoods, uh, what's the likelihood of this cancer being a real issue? And we don't want to just leave you on the lurch here because there is 
something that's pretty effective, and that's breast thermography, also called mammotherms. Right. And there's no radiation done with that. And it's a very effective test, particularly on the younger women. Right. Because it can detect the cancers that are in the uh, denser breasts. Yeah, it doesn't work on just looking at tissue density. It's because the density of a fibrocystic person and the density of a cancer is about the same. And it's like Vicki said, it's like trying to fly over the North Pole and differentiate snow from a polar bear and you can't see it. And many times it can tell you if it's a serious cancer or not because exactly. of how much angiogenesis. And angiogenesis is how much bl blood supply is going to that cancer. That's really right. So what we're looking at is a test of physiology with a breast thermography as opposed to a test of anatomy in somebody who has a mammogram or other tests that are often done to try and screen for breast cancer. So do mammograms save lives? Overall, they probably do, but not so much in the women who are under the age of 50. Uh, it's a trade-off of over-diagnosing, over-treating with finding an occasional additional cancer. So I think we have to start looking at what the this New England Journal of Medicine article is saying with the United States Preventive Services Task Force is saying, and, and take another hard look at this. For my patients, I don't recommend bre uh, doing mammograms in women under the age of 50 unless there's a special reason.